we're going to speak about compression. Compression is the process of making something smaller. In computer science, we use it to reduce a bandwidth, a transmission, a stream, a file size. Uh, we can use patterns and properties of the information to, uh, to shrink it and store it in a more compact form. Uh, this process is called compression. We're all familiar with uh, taking a raw image file or a large image file and saving it as a JPEG. Uh, the JPEG version is always or usually much smaller than the original raw image data. Um, JPEG is a compression algorithm. Uh, it happens to be a lossy one, but uh, we'll get into details of that a little bit later. There's really two main groupings for um, compression techniques. There's lossless algorithms. These are algorithms that are designed they, where they will return back an exact copy of the data that you compressed. So you uh, start with um, some files or a picture or something and you compress it. The compressed version can be expanded back to the original. You'll get an exact copy. Uh, a good example of that is zip compression. Take some files, place them in a zip folder. When you transmit this to a friend or, or, or when you open up the zip file later, they will get back an exact copy of the files you put in there. Uh, they don't lose any information in the process. Imagine an application that has a certain sequence of instructions uh, that's going to execute a, a program on your computer and then you were to compress it and when you uncompress it some of those instructions were thrown away in the process that program isn't going to run properly so there are lossless algorithms there are also what are called lossy algorithms these algorithms not only compress the data by uh, using information patterns and, and and things like that similar to a lossless algorithm but they also look at the content of the information and decide that some of it isn't important and can discard it. Uh, examples of this would be things like JPEG compression or MPEG video compression. Anything where the quality of the experience can be somewhat lessened, but the important stuff is still there. So like when you're watching a movie stream, the compression algorithms will remove details in parts of the frames that uh, are visually not important. So for example, the shadows might not be rendered as, uh, as finely as the details in the scene. This is just an acknowledgement that, that in the case of video, uh, it's acceptable to have information loss uh, if the transmission itself is quick and smooth. So, uh, lossy algorithms will generally have much higher compression rates than um, than the lossless ones. So let's take a look at a very basic lossless compression technique known as run length encoding. Uh, RLE, run length encoding algorithms, work very well on data that has long runs of repetitive information. Uh, this is a very simple technique. Uh, most modern techniques uh, are, go far beyond this, uh, but this is a good one to see what we're talking about uh, when we talk about compression. Let's say we have this sequence of 19 bytes worth of data. We're going to use letters in these examples because it's much clearer to distinguish the data from the run length encoding. Uh, this will also work with other types of data, not just letters. So here we have a pattern, 19 bytes. We can see that some information repeats. And if we were to apply run length encoding to it, uh, we might end up with something like this. You'll notice that even without understanding the algorithm, you can kind of guess that there were two A's, there were eight B's, there were four C's, there were four A's, and then there was one B. We successfully contain the same information, but in a more compact format. So we use 10 bytes instead, and we can calculate what we would call a compression ratio or a, a compression rate. Here we have a 47% rate. 
In order to execute these compressions, we need to define some algorithms. Algorithms, remember, are processes by which we can accomplish a goal or solve a problem. They are a sequence of instructions. So in our case, the algorithm for run length encoding algorithm one is to replace runs of characters with a single character followed by a number giving the repeat length. So in our original example of the 19 byte sequence, I've color coded the runs here and you'll see that that first run of AA gets replaced by the single character A and a count two. The, sec the, blue, the blue run of Bs gets encoded as B followed by the number of Bs that are in the sequence, in this case, which is eight. We would repeat that with the Cs and the As. And the thing we want to call attention to with this particular algorithm is that the B, since it's a singleton, only one of them, and it's not a run, still follows the same rule as runs, which means that the B is replaced not by one character, but by two. So this is an example where the compression algorithm actually requires more data than the original. Overall, this is a 10 byte to 19 byte, 47% compression like we showed before. So we can try to improve on that algorithm and we're going to talk about a second version, which is we replace runs of characters with a single character followed by a number, giving the repeat length like we did before, if the run is over one character. If the run is only one character, we leave that letter alone. You'll see that we have a slight improvement. The compression methods are similar for the long runs, but when we have a singleton character, it appears as only that character. So it's a no, not a, it's no worse than it was in the original. This will save us uh, a lot of run length bytes for single characters. So we get 19 reduces to nine instead of 10 bytes in this particular sequence. Here's an example of some data that would have been much worse in uh, run length to algorithm one. You'll see that this sequence here, the BABA, -A, would have been replaced by B1A1, B1A1. It would have doubled in size over those four bytes. And in this particular example, you see that it, re it, it, it is no worse than its original size. Run length encoding is a easy one to get your hand, hands or head wrapped around in terms of compression. But in the real world, we use much more sophisticated uh, compression algorithms than simple run length encoding. Uh, the, the widely used compression algorithms that, that are lossless, that many of us have uh, experience with in things like zip files, are generally dictionary compression techniques. What they do is instead of looking for runs of, of repeated data, like run length encoding does, they look for patterns that repeat multiple times in a, anywhere in a file. And so if you get a sequence of bytes that is, you know, two or three bytes long, that gets replaced by a lookup uh, key into a dictionary table that is holding that particular run. This technique really gets um, efficient when you start to find long runs that are repeated. And, um, and so some data uh, compresses very well under these conditions. So in the real world, we use very sophisticated compression techniques to, to transmit data at, uh, more efficiently, to store data more efficiently, and uh, we saw a few examples of how uh, algorithms could be applied to uh, compress data. Uh, 